Hi guys, it's John here again with a benchmark comparison test between the Exynos 2200 and the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. So these have both now had the April update installed and it did come out a week or so ago, or a couple of weeks ago nearly, but obviously I was away on holiday so I didn't get to actually do any benchmarking until I got back. But anyway, I have put the version numbers on the screen of each phone and the only difference I've found actually is that the Google Play system update is slightly older on the Snapdragon compared to the Exynos, but that shouldn't really affect anything where the benchmarks are concerned. So we can see here the results for April and I can go through them obviously as we did last month. So all I'm doing is just popping these in below the previous month's update and then I can easily compare them and work out averages as to whether things have increased or decreased. So the Geekbench CPU results were quite interesting. As you can see, they've both actually decreased and this actually caused a problem with my automation. So normally I automate the benchmarks nowadays to save me having to sit there and run each one manually. But because these were actually taking so much longer to complete, I was finding that the automation I'd set up wasn't actually going through properly. So in the end, I did have to actually run everything manually. So I'm gonna to have to redo that, I think at some point. But yeah, the strange one here was obviously the 8 Gen 1 seems to have had a decrease in its scores by nearly 15%. And also the Exynos 2200 is down by nearly 3.5%. So not very impressed really with these scores. Now heat wise, the Snapdragon has always been getting a bit warmer in this generation compared to the Exynos. And that was the same I found with these tests this month as well. So there haven't been any sort of thermal improvements at all when it comes to the processors. But yeah, it's sad to see that the huge gap here between the Exynos and Snapdragon is increasing. So although they have both gone down, which is quite disappointing, for some reason the Snapdragon has gone down a lot more. Still winning on its single core, however, so single core things are always going to be better on the Snapdragon still, whereas multi-core things are going to always be better on the 2200. Now this is similar to the 2100 and Snapdragon 888 that we saw last year. The Exynos always was better at multitasking or multi-core tasks compared to the Snapdragon. So moving on to the compute scores as well, we can see there's been a very slight increase on both. So these small increases here on both aren't really anything to uh, get too excited about, but it's, at least they are a positive rather than a negative. So again, compute score, the mathematical compute capability of the CPU. And again, the Exynos has always been better in the last couple of generations than the Snapdragon. So this is to be expected. And obviously the overall winner here for the compute was the 2200. So similar to our compute scores, which weren't very exciting, the same can be said for the Antutu benchmark. Now I did update this to version 9.3.6, as you can see, and I did also update the 3D pack as well. I do that every time just in case there have been any improvements. Now again, this was another issue I had on the Snapdragon where the rendering scene seemed to crash and just you know quit the application on the 8 Gen 1 a couple of times. So I did actually have to run this a few times on the Snapdragon more than I did on the 2200. However, I did actually run all three tests successfully after I'd completed all the other tests and the phones had cooled down. So this is a fair test. I did run them again just to be sure I got some proper results. So yeah, again, nothing really very exciting here. The Exynos 2200 is still beating the 8 Gen 1 on every test. Now, don't forget we have the game optimizing service turned off still on both of these, and we have the Thermal Guardian at a plus two for thermal. So these are really as maxed out as they can get, really. But yeah, it's interesting to see that the scores have actually decreased slightly, even though the Exynos 2200 is still just about managing to beat the 8 Gen 1. Okay, so let's take a look at the stress test results now, and we'll start off with the Exynos 2200 CPU performance. And we can see overall, I'd say that we're a bit worse off, or a fair lot worse off than we were last month in March. So here are March's results down below. And we can see in April, it starts off okay. So we start off in a reasonably good fashion here with the first 15 minute stress test. But then as we move on to the second test, I don't know what's going on here, but the CPUs seem to be locked at about 60% performance. We then suddenly at the sort of four and a half minute mark get unlocked and we do start seeing a more normal figure, which is possibly even a bit better than the figures that we were seeing here in the March update. But yeah, this whole bit at the front of the test is a bit strange. I don't know what's happening here 
or why it's doing that. But yeah, that's very interesting to see that after the first test, you can see 38 degrees, we hit up to 39 degrees, which isn't a huge amount more, but we do actually see a lot worse performance at the start of the test. So even though last month's March one was getting up to 39, we didn't see anything like this in last month's firmware. So again, on the third and final test, for a bit longer, we are locked at about 60%, and then we do burst up back out and around 80%, which again, is probably better than the performance in the last part of the March update. But the whole fact we've got this 60% locking here is a bit sad to see. So I hope that does get removed. I don't really want to see the CPU being uh, throttled in that way because that uh, isn't helping anyone. We'll now just compare the CPU cores clocks as well. And we can see here exactly where this 60% throttling is happening on the second and third test. So it's very strange really because it then does get unlocked and you can see compared to last month's, it's a lot worse off than we were before. So hopefully next month we'll see a much better improvement and be more similar to the March update because this was really uh, probably at its peak so far for the 2200. So it is sad to see that the cores are being held back for some reason on the final two tests. So if we move over to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, we can see much better view here of the performance and it is actually performing a lot better as well. Overall, for the first test, we can see compared to March, it was hovering below 80% most of the time, but here we are peaking above 80% most of the time, then slowly dipping down a bit towards the final part of the test and ending at around 36 degrees. So that's a nice one to see, whereas before we were getting up to 40 and 41, we can see here. Second test as well also looks very good. And overall, on average, I'd say the performance is better than it was in the March update here. We've got a lot more peaks up to 100 and mostly at around 90% as well here, which is really good to see. Third test, slightly worse off. We've got a few jumps up and down here, which is probably not as good as the third final test in the March update. We can see the drops here are just above 65, 70%, but here they are dropping below 60% a lot more often. So slightly worse performance there, I'd say, in the third test. But heat-wise, they do seem to be a lot better, at least in these tests here. So if we look at the CPU cores for the Snapdragon, we can see some very strange results here. Last month, we did get a lot of performance well above 2.5 gigahertz here for Core 7 at least, and Core 6 was performing pretty well, although it did have quite a few dips down to the 1 gigahertz mark. So we are seeing less dips for Core 6 here, but Core 7 does appear to have been throttled down, and as you can see here, throttled down quite badly to below 2 gigahertz. As we move on to the second test, we can see again that the cores are definitely being locked down quite low here for the Snapdragon, 1.8 maybe gigahertz here, 1.9 possibly for 7 and 6 is running at about 1.5. So yeah, it depends whether you like seeing straight lines or lots of jumps and dips. Now, performance-wise, obviously we saw that performance was quite good on the Snapdragon, so maybe this is actually just helping to lock them at a more stable state. And again, on the third and final test, we can see a very similar story. So most of the test, it is sat there at a locked speed, whereas towards the end, it does get unlocked. So yeah, it's interesting set of results there for the stress test. So next up, I moved on to the Wildlife Extreme test here, and this is where the biggest result difference was. And there's been a huge increase here for the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, which is really good to see. That means the Adreno is really being utilized very well on the 8 Gen 1, whereas the Xclips on the AMD is still not really faring too well. I mean, it's had a nearly 8.5% increase, which is nice to see. And there was actually an update to the Wildlife Extreme package. So hopefully that does mean they've added some compatibility in, at least for the latest Adreno, and perhaps even taking note of the Eclipse here with the slight increase as well. But I would like to see this a lot higher on the 2200, so that is a nice, easy win there for the 8 Gen 1. So next up was the Slingshot Extreme test, and we can see here, again, nothing too exciting here to talk about particularly. There has been the biggest increase here in graphics test one for the 8 Gen 1. If we look back to last month, we can see the 8 Gen 1 was at 74, and I did notice a big difference there, obviously, where we got 99 frames per second, which is really nice to see. So that was the biggest jump that I saw amongst all the tests, 
but overall the percent increase or decrease is only nearly 2% increase on the Snapdragon, which is obviously nice to see, but we did get a minus 2% on the 2200. So we can see again, it's very similar to last month. The Snapdragon wins on the first two graphics tests. The Exynos 2200 wins on the physics tests. And that is seen pretty much throughout the rest of each test. So on average here, we can see HN1 still winning on the graphics and the 2200 still winning on the physics. So physics obviously uses mathematical calculations, whereas graphics uses the raw power of the GPU. So we know that the Adreno is still definitely more optimized, certainly at the moment, than the, than the Eclipse GPU on the 2200. But there's still obviously plenty of time for developers such as 3 Mark, such as Antutu, to actually optimize their applications better to utilize the AMD chip on the 2200. So overall, again, the Exynos 2200 has six wins this month and the HN1 has four. So it's still overall, the 2200 is still performing better overall as a phone in comparison to the HN1 but obviously for raw gaming the HN1 is still going to win with its graphics tests here so it really depends if you are a huge gamer then the HN1 is still the way to go if you need that extra few frames per second whereas if you're just a general user who plays the odd game who won't notice the odd frame drop 2200 will be absolutely fine for you but yeah I do hope to see these increase on the Exynos 2200, 67 and 37. Slightly better than last month's, as we can see, 62 and 32. So a five frames per second better, but overall a, a drop of 2% with all the results combined. So I hope you found this video useful. There is no camera update this month, so there's no point in doing a camera comparison. As soon as there is an update, I obviously will do another comparison though between them. But yeah, let me know what your thoughts are down below and what your scores are. And don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the bell notification to be notified when I next release a video. And any questions or comments you have, leave them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. And again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.